I figure since I have BenQ Mobius EX480UZ in the studio to do the review, I'm going to do a profiling guide as well. Should you purchase this display and you want to use it in your pro workflow, this would definitely be the guide to watch. Let's profile this display. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. A quick overview of this EX480UZ. This is part of BenQ gaming and entertainment display line and it was never really intended for pro workflow. However, because we can profile this display and if you get one of these, why not make it a multi-purpose display? This is a 48 inch panel, 4K UHD that has a refresh rate that can go up to as high as 120 Hertz. And it is also BenQ very first OLED panel. So you're gonna get true blacks from this and it looks absolutely stunning in person. If you wanna see a full review of this display, I have made one that covers both the gaming and entertainment along with the pro perspective as well. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Now, before we start our profiling process, we have to do a few things. We have to turn on the display and leave it running for at least 20 minutes or more. This would give the backlight the opportunity to properly warm up. And because this is an OLED panel, my recommendation is to display something bright or with lighter colors because if you just show black, I mean, there's barely going to be any electricity that are going to hit those OLED pixels. So what you want to do is show something lighter. This way the pixel has this chance to properly warm up. Disable display mirroring. So if you have your display link up to a portable laptop device, or if you have a desktop with multiple displays and you're seeing the same windows on both displays or the same program running, chances are you're in display mirroring mode and you need to disable that first before you can start the profiling process. There are certain OS specific settings that you need to turn off. For Mac, there has been many changes, about three so far. And depending on your operating system, I have created a guide for each of those versions. So I will check those link out below and take a look at the operating system version you're running and choose the appropriate video. For Windows, there's one guide for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. And lastly, the profiling process for this display will be the same for both Macs and Windows. However, I'll be doing this demo on my Macintosh system. Now I've done extensive testing on this EX480UZ and you can certainly pause the screen, but essentially I have done the calibration in display P3, sRGB and numerous setting in the custom mode. So the result for this would be in display P3, I'm able to get an average Delta E of 0.9. And just for a quick reference, anytime you look at a display for pro workflow, a Delta E below two is considered great. A Delta E below three is considered good, but I would still prefer everything to be below two. Considering that this is an entertainment and gaming display first, the fact that we can get the Delta E all together below two, this is absolutely fantastic. So for display P3, the average is 0.9 with one max patch at 2.6. sRGB, we get an average Delta E of one. These are really great average Delta E, by the way, with one max patch being a 2.5. Again, in the two range, it's a little bit high, but it's only for one color. And in the last one, the custom mode, I have tried numerous settings and this is the one that I can get the value at the lowest or Delta E at the lowest. The average on all the patches for this one is 1.9, which is rather high. And the max for one of the patches is 2.8. So based on this conclusion, I would recommend that you go in and calibrate this display using either display P3 or sRGB color mode and forgo the custom mode altogether. This way you don't have to go in and change all those settings. Now, one caveat is that if you're watching this video and you have, for example, BenQ EX3210U, I have also created a calibration guide for that. And for that display, for that specific 32 inch EX model, you're better off using a custom mode with the settings that I've showed you in that guide. So quite a departure between these two models in the exact same lineup. But anyway, we move on. All right, so the last thing you want to do before you start the display profiling process is you want to choose the color mode for the display. I created a chart so that you can easily go through and choose what you want to do. 
So if you're doing any type of photo or graphic work, I recommend choosing either Display P3 or sRGB. If you're doing video with Rec. 709, use sRGB color mode because there is no Rec. 709 on this display, but it will work in exactly the same way. And if you do video P3, then choose Display P3 to work in. Now, as far as profiling setting in the program, the luminance for photo, I still recommend choosing anywhere between 80 to 120, that's going to give you the best luminance results so that anytime you're editing or you're previewing your images before you print, or even if you don't print, should you ever print in the future, that image is not gonna be too dark when it comes out from the printer and it's going to look proper on any display. If you're doing video work, 80 to 160 nits or candela works as fine. The choice is really up to you. As far as gamma go, photo and graphic works, I would stick with gamma 2.2. If you're doing video work, you have the option to choose Gamma of 2.4, which is really close to BT1886, or if you have a compatible or capable device, you can certainly profile your display with BT1886 Gamma Curve as well. So with that in mind, let's jump right into Calibrite Profiler. For this profiling, what I'm going to use is the Color Checker Display Plus model. Now, this is the plus model that can do BT1886 Gamma Curve, and I'm going to quickly show you that, but the majority of this demo will be focused on profiling this display for photography, but I'll show you where you can go in and change auto settings. So with Calibrite Profiler Launch, I am going to choose the Advanced Mode because I like to control all the settings for my calibration. We can see there that my Color Checker Display Plus is active. I will click on Next. Now, what I'm going to do is choose the EX480UZ, which is already selected, and the backlight technology for this display is OLED, so I will select that. Now, what I'm going to do for this one is I will start with Photo. But if, for instance, you do Video, I'm going to quickly show you that, you can choose all these preset settings that you want to use. But one of the things that you can also do is to skip all these together and go in to start customizing your settings by clicking on that top bar. So for the white point, I'm going to use D65, but should you want to do this for pre-press work, you can certainly try that and use D50, but we'll stick with D65. As far as luminance go, I am going to calibrate this display to 80 nits or 80 candela, but if you want to use another luminance point, you can certainly do that as well but we'll stick to 80 for this one. I'll click on next and this is going to walk me through all those different settings. So right now the contrast ratio I have set for this display is native. So whatever the display can show, we're going to leave it as such. Gamma 2.2, this is for photo, but if you should do video work, you will want to click on custom and from this drop down list, you can choose a few things. So for instance, you can choose custom and you can type in or slide it up to 2.4 and do a 2.4 custom gamma. This is if you have the Color Checker Display Pro. But if you want to go in and choose BT1886, you can certainly choose it for the Color Checker Display Plus, which is the device that I have. For now, I'm going to stick with gamma 2.2. Now we can go in and look at all the advanced profiling options. My recommendation is to leave all of these a default, turn off the ambient light auto adjust and flare correction. You don't really need those. And as far as patches go, in general, I recommend choosing the Advanced Plus with 461, but for the sake of brevity and we're doing this demo, I am going to use the standard patch 118. From here, I will choose to click on Next. And now we're at the ready to measure screen. I have my Color Checker Display Plus, which is showing active, and on the preset is showing a yellow ring. That means I made some changes to the setting and I have not saved this as a preset yet. If you want to save your own preset for future usage for profiling, you can certainly do that. I'm going to skip this for now and click on Start Measurement. Now, before we go on from the screen or look at the settings, what we need to do first is choose the color mode that we want to use on our display. So for this, I'll go into the Display Quick Menu and I already have Display P3 selected. But if you want to choose another color mode, for example, sRGB, you will come through this menu and make those changes appropriately. Now, there's also an M-Book color mode on many of BenQ displays, and that is a color mode that's designed and calibrated from the factory so that the color showing on the display would match that of an Apple uncalibrated display. If you want your BenQ screen to match that of any Apple display, 
My recommendation is to choose Mbook and don't calibrate it. But we want the most accurate color possible, so I am going to choose Display P3 and I'll go back into Calibrite Profiler. Now in this program, I have the option to choose brightness or to change brightness, RGB and contrast. Because I am using a factory pre-calibrated color mode, the only thing that I can really change is brightness. So that's why brightness is the only box being checked right now. I'll click on continue and it's now going to ask me to have the device on the display. So what I'm simply going to do is take the device and I'll rotate this so that it opens up so that you can see the lens right there. And you can simply adjust the counterweight by pressing on it and just pulling it up or down a wire. It doesn't take that much weight at all. You don't have to pull on the wire that hard. It just works really well. I'll hang this in the middle of the display. And what I'm also going to do is tilt the display backwards. This way I can ensure that my colorimeter or any device that you may have is laying flat on the display, minimize any stray light coming in. And you can certainly profile your display in a bright environment like this and you're going to be okay. I'll click on next and now what I'm going to do is adjust the brightness. So the brightness right now is off. What I'm going to do is go into the display quick menu and we'll bring the brightness down. Now this is going to constantly measure so you can just bring it down all the way and the moment you stop I mean you'll see the value adjusting. So we'll get this as close as possible to 80 nits. Now one thing to keep in mind is that because we're adjusting this on a 0 to 100 scale it may not show up exactly at 80. I'm able to get this display right now to show 80, but if you are within plus minus five, you're gonna be okay. So as long as you're within that range, if you don't land exactly at the value that you want, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it too much. But I already have this dial into 80, so what I'm simply gonna do is exit the menu and click on next. Now what I need to do is click on start measurement. Otherwise, I'll be staring at that white circle with the calibrator hanging from the display. I'll leave this running. When it finished, we'll come back and then we'll talk about some of the results, save the profile, validate it, and then we'll go over the result again. All right. We'll be back soon. All right, now that the measurement has finished, it is asking us to remove the device and put the diffusion back on the lens. I'm going to leave it where it is for now because I'll be validating the display in just a moment. I'll click on next. I'll see the colors from the actual measurement. This is what the display can produce. I'll click on next and this is where I would save the profile. So I'll slide the device a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is just modify the name slightly. So that it's a little bit more concise. But in general, the program itself does a really good job generating a name for you. It will give you the display manufacturer, the model number, the date of calibration or profiling. And what I add there at the end is DP3. This is my shorthand for display P3 color mode. If you run this calibration as RGB, you might want to add that in. Or for instance, if you run the calibration sRGB and use Gamma 2.4, or BT1886, you can add all those annotation in the file name as well. And this is going to help you to choose the correct profile later on down the road. And as far as reminder go, I have mine set to never because I've run so many calibrations, testing software, testing displays. But for general, for your own use, my recommendation is to choose anywhere between two to four weeks. This way you get a reminder to reprofile your display so you can get the most accurate color possible. I'll simply click on save. And what I can do now is view the before and after, choose different pictures to do a preview on, take a look at the profile information or see the gamma curve tracking and all those things. But I'm simply gonna do this, just go into the validation. Now with Calibrite Profiler, you have the opportunity to live on the wild side and choose to have it validate in Color Checker Digital SG, which bumps it up from the classic 24 patch to 96. But for the sake of brevity, I will choose 24 patches for this demo and I will click on next. Verify that everything is working. I'll slide the device back into place. Display is already tilted. Everything is good. It's showing a green check mark. I'll click on next. And don't forget to click on start measurement. Otherwise, you'll be staring at that white circle. So this will go through and this will be done very soon. We'll give a conclusion about the calibration result in just a moment. 
All right, so now it's asking us to take the device down again. I'm gonna do it this time because I finished the calibration process. We'll click on next. And now we are looking at the result. So for all the patches, my average is 1.1. And for one of the max, I have it up to 2.8. So again, these are still all passing criteria. For the average itself is under two, it's considered really good. And these are for majority of those patches. It's just that there is one color patch that's showing up at 2.8. It's still passed under the three, which is considered good. So, I mean, like I said, this is really designed first as a gaming and entertainment display. And the fact that it can be calibrated at all and get an average below two, I mean, that's just really impressive. So a few things I know during my testing and calibration process, and this is something that if you get the display, you want to note as well. My recommendation is to use a USB type C to USB type C, especially if you are on a Mac system, because when you run the profiling, you're going to get a much better result. I have tested this with a USB-C to USB-C and also USB-C to DisplayPort. When I used the USB-C to DisplayPort, the Delta E values were higher and also the max were higher as well. So my recommendation, stick with USB-C to USB-C. That's going to give you the best result. And it will also charge your device at the very same time using only just one cable. And that's really awesome. So anyway, I hope that you find this guide helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new and in our retrust.